of God. Amen. What a calling on this church. You're an apostolic church. You've got a leader that is an apostle in this nation. He needs strong men and women around him and his wife. And some of you are going to have to go a bit deeper and harder. And I just want to encourage you, and I hope that the word that I share this morning will set the scene for you. And the title of my message this morning is Coming from a Place of Rest. Coming from a Place of Rest. Thank you, worship team. It's uh, so good to see Irena leading like that. So she's one of our level four students at Excel. And uh, man, your singing's improving. Must be your vocal tutor. Uh, my wife is the vocal tutor at Excel. Morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the welcome. This is like my second church. We were just down here two, two months ago with Excel. Um, I run Excel with my wife, Deborah, and Pastor James has been uh, a very key man in my own life. I said two months ago that at one point our roles swapped and he was like a father to me. He helped me through quite a tricky patch of my life. And I'm glad that you said that, Pastor Gemma. No matter what your age, man, you need to sign up for that freedom freedom thing. Um, Powerful, powerful. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what the Lord's been doing in my life too. Um, yeah, but as, as I say, I, um, greetings from Hope Central in Manukau, where I'm a member um, and part of the leadership team there under Pastor Luca Robertson. And um, man, the Lord is, there's going to be prayer meetings down in Wellington at St. Paul's that Hope Global are helping to lead. Uh, collaborating. Something is happening in this nation in the government, and I believe that Advanced Church and the INC, you were right in there with it, because uh, interested in your title of your, um, uh, you know, God, well, that, that message that I got there, God's not fin- done with you yet. God's not done with you yet, because is this nation turned to God yet? No way. So there's plenty of work to be done. And we all know how important Topo is, is the belly button of this nation, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, look, I won't go there too much. (laughs) But look, uh, you may be wondering why I've got a banana here, but I want you to um, turn to Isaiah chapter 28, and I pinched this photo off the internet there. Um, Man, I love this part of the country. Um, when I was at university, I used to spend most of my weekends down there skiing, and I was a member of the Alpine Club. We used to climb and, and stay up in the Alpine Club hut, uh, which is up at the top of the, the chair there. Um, so many a morning I've been up there uh, on that mountain. So um, what, a, what a beautiful part of the country here. So uh, I'm at the age where I need glasses. So <laughs> Yeah, I see some grey hairs nodding at me. Uh, actually, I think I'm at the age where I might need to wear them all the time, but all good. So Isaiah 28. So I want to talk about coming from a place of rest and just share. And I give my wife permission any time to come up because I know that um, when she speaks, she carries an anointing. And, and really, this journey has been both of us. And so you come up, sweetheart, any time you feel... Um, uh, you feel it. All right. So Isaiah 28 verse 11 says this. Very well then, with foreign lips and strange tongues, God will speak to this people. Did you get that? God will speak. That's quite key. God is going to speak. And to whom he said, this is the resting place Let the weary rest, and this is the place of repose or refreshing. So whatever this foreign lips, strange tongue, God speaking, it's a resting place. It's a place of rest. It's powerful. So um, let's go to the banana, eh? 
I, I saw this on my Twitter feed the other day as a life hack. You, are we interested in life hacks? Now, I, I sent this on our family chat, and I was interested where, um, where do you like your banana? <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm in the middle there, ripe. My wife likes it right under ripe. So, you know, I found this life hack. Do you want to just go to the next um, uh, slide there? If you wrap it with a tissue and water and you keep it wet, it keeps it from going overripe. Now, that's a cool hack, and we've been just trying it over the last two months, and it works. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, my wife is happy because it keeps them a little bit underripe without going too ripe too quick. But look, aren't we all interested in life hacks? Aren't we interested in these little things that are going to uh, make things easier for us? And they're so simple. You know? I mean, who would have thought of that? Just wrapping it with some tissue has such an, uh, an effect. So obviously keeping... This is like probably the roots <laughs> of the fruit, and it just keeps it moist from going overripe. Um, so... What I want to talk to you about this morning is a life hack that I've sort of kind of just stumbled upon. And I, I have talked a, a little bit about this at men's camp last year, and I've been coming down over the last couple of years because this has been a journey that I really started in August 2019. I came home from a, 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 um, a prayer meeting, and I thought, man, I know, I'm, I, know I should pray more. I know I should pray more. We all think that, don't we? And I went home and I got a book out of, out of my shelf and I started a journey of realizing what the whole, how the Holy Spirit wants to help us, not only in our Christian life but especially in prayer. And at the end of the day, do you know what? Prayer is the thing which changes things. Prayer is so important. Um, so do you want to just hit the next slide there? Um, okay, none of you are bad fishermen like me. <laughs> but um, sometimes we have tangles and we don't know where to start. We actually don't know where to start. That's why I'm very interested that we had that powerful testimony that I don't know if Angelique's here this morning, but man, when I, when I, ah, oh, it's so good, church. Have you got something like that in this church? Because sometimes you don't know where to start and you need some help. You know, and, and whether it's like um, my garage at home, <laughs> I used to be able to drive the car into it. Now it's got a little bit of mess in there. I don't know where to start. It's, it's, just so, it's 20 years of accumulated junk. Oh, I've got to keep that. I might need that for something. And you know what I mean? And sometimes our own life, is like that, and we get a bit stuck, and we don't know where to start. There's a bit of a tangle. And I'll be honest, I got into a bit of a tangle around August 2019. And I knew, I just reached out to the Lord, and through this question of why, why don't I pray as much as I know I should, the Lord started to take me down a journey of uh, praying in the Spirit or speaking in tongues, and just allowing the Holy Spirit to move. And what I want to share this morning is what's happened over these last four years. Because it's been utterly incredible. A tangle that I had no idea how to undo. The Holy Spirit has miraculously brought along this thing. Why don't you look at this? Okay, there's this doctrine I want you to read. There's this book. There's this uh, video. You know, it was just like step by step, the Lord led me to things that have helped me. Now, I've brought, I've actually written about my journey here, and I have talked about this a little bit when I was here with Excel. I've actually got them printed now. My my daughter uh, got, got them printed, and I've got copies here. They're only, uh, I'll, I'll sell them at fifteen dollars, but all the money is going to this church. All right, so that it'll bless you guys. And you know, if you pay for something, you will look after a little bit more. So I've got a box of them there, and um, they'll be there at the back. I don't think the FPOS machine is working, but you can put your name down, and I'll leave it up to you, to be honest, to put the money into the church. Is that all good? But this is a story of which I've called Restoring the Ancient Path. 
because it's a path that has been hidden there for 2,000 years and we were never meant to do the Christian life on our own. Not only do we need humans and brothers and sisters to do it, but when you read chapter, verses like Galatians, uh, Galatians 5, where we walk in the Spirit, where we're led by the Spirit. When you read Romans 8, 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In fact, the name of the Holy Spirit is the Comforter, which is Paraclete, which is the Helper, which is the Encourager, which is the one, would you like me to help? I'm here to help. That's what it is. That's who he is. And we have a helper. And I have discovered this helper, and I have discovered it a little bit by accident. But now I'm telling you, and I'm giving you my, my, what I've learned, so you don't have to go through four years. But your tangle may take four years. You know, there, there, are, there are some things that are not instant fixes. And in my own journey, I've found that... Um, uh, and, and why don't you turn to John 5, because I want to tell you a little bit about my own journey here. So John chapter 5. <coughs> so I have a, a Bible reading plan, and... Um, I'm in my third year, a uh, third time through the Bible. I've been doing it for 12 years. I have it on my note on my phone. And one day I thought, you know what? I don't actually like those readings that you have to read about 17 chapters in one day. It's just, you know, and then you get behind and then it's just... So what I did is, you know what? I'm just going to split the Bible up into, you know, the history ones, the, the Gospels, the prophetic books. And I just mixed it all up and I just created this thing. And then I just work it through at my own pace. And sometimes I take a whole week on one chapter because I'm just, that's the Lord speaking to me. Now, I'm just telling you that whatever you find a method that works for you, you might like those ones that are like word for today is great. But sometimes I just find it, it just goes too much too fast. So I just linger. But whatever you do, have something where you're in the Word of God. So I was in my normal routine of life. I was in my normal routine of life, and I came to John 5. This was about two weeks ago, so this particular testimony is very fresh. And I read John 5, and we're just going to read it now. And uh, I, I nicked that one from The Chosen. Who, who loves The Chosen? I mean, I tell you what, when we get to the season where Jesus is going to get crucified and all is, it's just going to, it's just going to, man, I'm almost feeling it now. But what, what an anointed um, series. Look, it's free. Download Angel Studios on your phone. It's, it's just an amazing uh, look into the Bible. Um, there's actually a beautiful, um, remember the lady that touched the hem of the garment? Do you know what her name was in the Bible? It was Veronica. Yeah, I, I preached a message on it. Uh, uh, it. They just do it so well. Um, touch the hem of the garment. Anyway, so here's the pool of Bethesda, uh, which was on the north side of the temple. And... Um, so let, let's read from verse five, uh, verse 1. Sometime later, I'll just tilt this up like this. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there, were, there was in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. And then it goes on to talk about how he didn't even know who had healed him. But 
The bit, bit that I wanted to just to um, talk about this morning in my own story was r- when I read it this time, and I've read this passage many, many times. Isn't it interesting that just in my normal discipline of reading the Word, the Lord picked this? Because you're about to hear, as I read this, I sat there, and I, as I do, I just uh, I, I start to just meditate, and I just think, okay, Lord, what are you saying here? And I shared last time that I have two questions that I often ask the Lord. What do you want me to know, Jesus? What do you want me to do? And then I just wait and listen. And as I was doing it, uh, as I was going through it this time, I saw in my mind's eye, um, uh, I saw myself lying there on that mat. And I saw myself with a bandage around my right arm. And it was a little bit old and hadn't been changed in a while. It was a little bit a bit smelly and you know what I mean? And I felt like the Lord said, today I'm going to touch that wound. Now, what you don't know is that the day before I'd been talking to my pastor and, and he said, why don't we have a prayer time the next day uh, on the Wednesday? So I'm talking to him on Tuesday. I'm reading this on Wednesday morning. Just my normal run-of-the-mill Bible reading. And the Lord had arranged for me to have a three-hour prayer session with my wife and with my pastor and with, with one of the brothers. And it's just like something in my spirit, wow, the Lord is going to touch whatever this is. And I thought, what does a right arm mean? What is right arm? And then I was drawn, you know, I often, um, when I don't hear anything, I'll go to Google search because they're quite good. <laughs> you know, Google search, I typed in right arm. And you know, there's this verse that talks about uh, extending the right arm of fellowship. And, and I felt like the Lord said to me, John, you have quite a bit of rejection in your life and you never quite feel that you belong. You never feel like someone's gripped and you're welcome in this place. Welcome. And it was like, because I, I shared a little bit um, last time I was here um, two months ago that I was sent to a boarding school when I was six years old. Um, and ironically, right at this time, uh, they had a 50-year reunion back there. And I couldn't go because uh, work didn't, didn't allow me to go. But when you get sent away at six... No matter, I had a lot of fun. I have photos of me up in the tree hut and having a lot of fun as a little kid. But you don't have the maturity at that age to make sense of everything. And your heart starts to give some messages. What's wrong with me that I've got sent away? Am I not really loved? And then I made this, I know I made this vow. I am going to prove that I'm going to run my own life. Because when you get sent away as a little, it's almost like an orphan. And look, I must, you know, I know this is getting recorded. And if my, wa- uh, my mother uh, <laughs> ever watches this, it, it's such a painful thing for my mum. And I can never even talk to her about it because it just stirs up a moment. Because it was hard for her. But it was mission policy. My parents were missionaries. So anyway, there's this wound and that's six, and now I'm 60, 60. It's longer than 38 years. But I, I, I went back and I thought, what, why does it, what is it about this 38 years thing? And I remembered that that took me back from 2023, took me back to 1975. And uh, 1985, sorry. The, it's such a, <laughs> a long time ago. In 1985 was a year where I took a real turn into rebellion. And I had been back in church, raised in church, baptized, um, all sorts of things, but I had a numbness. And, and I, I, in 85, I was 23. I was at that age, right, I don't need God, I don't need people, I'm just doing whatever I want. 
And it was like the Lord took me back 38 years and today I'm going to touch that wound of rejection and I'm going to do something. And so we had a, a, a time of prayer. It was about three hours long. There were tears. We were repenting. The Lord brought it up. For those of you that understand the courts of heaven, we went there. Um, we, we, it's freedom prayer, whatever you, whatever you like to do it. When you're truthful with God, he starts to bring real truth into you. That's so important. You have got to be truthful with God. If you are not honest with God, if you try and hide things from him, he knows them anyway. But very often, you actually can't do it without someone else there to help you. I couldn't just do it on my own bed at home. You need other people to help you. And that's why I love your freedom groups, because we need each other. It's actually biblical. James 5, confess your sins to one another. And so this, this time of, and look, I've been a Christian for a long time. You think, man, I'm running Excel. I shouldn't have these problems right now. But you need to hear this. Whatever stage of life you're at, you're not a complete work yet. God is not done with you yet. And it is not embarrassing to have to go and deal with stuff. And in fact, very often, you are not ready to deal with stuff yet. And if God showed you everything, you'd get overwhelmed. So just take it as God un 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 unveils the layers of the onion. And just relax that you're not perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to some of you men here that uh, are leaders in this church and part of Pastor James' apostolic band because he needs strong men in this church. And you say, oh, man, if, I, if Pastor James really knew what my life was like. But look, you need to be encouraged. Don't be afraid if you haven't got it all together. You know, you have got to be strong, and as, as, a, as a movement and, and leading the movement, you've sort of got to be strong, but sometimes you've got to be able to be weak and just say, I need some help. And this is what coming from a place of rest is all about, because I, I, know, I know the pressure of trying to keep things going and keeping it, but we have to have a place of rest in this Christian life. So... That three-hour prayer, I left a different man. Exactly like Angelique there, there was something lifted over me. Um, you know, and, and the, th the thing that really put a cloud of rejection over my life was when someone tried to pray for me to get speaking in tongues. I was 15 years old. It was 1975. There was a move of God. Some of you will notice the charismatic renewal um, where... God started to touch people in Anglican, Methodist, Baptist. I was a good Baptist boy, and also I was part of a brethren church. And um, a lot of people spoke against tongues and said, no, it's not for today. Uh, I had a, someone in my own wider family circle sort of get tipped over the edge mentally. Uh, they, they had uh, something else that was part of it, but people blamed the Holy Spirit. People blamed tongues. And you see, I know that the enemy has gone after this because it is so powerful. It is, it'll change your life. It is a place of rest working with the Holy Spirit. And it's a life hack because from August 29, I would just sit there, pray in tongues, put my music on my little Spotify, and I did nothing. I was like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I see, I've been a Martha mostly all my life, doing, doing, doing. But here's Mary just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And when you learn that this is something for us, that the Lord wants it for every Christian. And I want by the end of this morning that the same faith that you had to come to Jesus for salvation, you were able to come to Jesus for the baptism of the Spirit and be released in tongues. And look, I know that this is a real trigger for some people. God, I've been there. And I was, I was riding home. I, I was riding home on my bike. Um, I was 15 years old. I was in Christchurch. And the crushing disappointment of not, uh, nothing happening when people prayed for me. I saw my friends 
speaking in tongues, nothing happened to me. I just wasn't ready to receive. You know, all that rejection, it just, I couldn't, it wasn't the right timing. But did I know that? No, I thought something was wrong for me. And so by the time I got to 1985, I thought, pah, oh, this Christianity, it's not working for me. And so that's why the Lord took me back to 38 years. Because the Lord was healing something. And I left that morning. We prayed up at VCC there and just a, a cloud had lifted over. And look, I've had measures of breakthrough, but I'm walking in a different breakthrough now that the Lord has, has, has opened up to me. And um, I just want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, because I just want to just show you what happens and why uh, speaking in tongues is so important and why the enemy has gone after it. And I, I just have a burning heart to encourage the body of Christ in this. Yeah, it's so important. The enemy has gone after this because it's a life hack. All I did was sit at the feet of Jesus and speak in tongues. I didn't even know what, I didn't even know I had a bandage on my arm. It took four years of the Holy Spirit's gentle oil. Now we're ready to unwrap this bandage. You don't have to rush it. It could be four years. It could be two weeks. Let the Holy Spirit do this. Now, 1 Corinthians 2 is an amazing passage. So can you turn to 1 Corinthians 2? Because I just going back to um, Isaiah 28, you don't have to take the slide back there. But do you remember, with foreign lips and stammering tongue, I God will speak to this people. And we know it's about tongues because the Apostle Paul references this Isaiah passage in the tongues chapter, 1 Corinthians 14. So we know it's about tongues. And what the prophet Isaiah said is this is the place of rest. This is the place of rest. Because you're just sitting there at the feet of Jesus speaking in tongues. It's easy. It's a rest. And it's such a rest that I just have such a burning passion that it's for everyone. And I just know through my own walk how the enemy has gone after it and tried to keep me from this thing. And I know even some of you, some of you out there, you know, I've, I've even talked with you at camp and, you know, I don't know where you're at today, but uh, I hope I'm not triggering you, but I hope I'm encouraging you because I think um, the Lord needs you to hear this because the Holy Spirit is there waiting to help you untangle whatever you need. Right. And come up with strategies and come up with things that you don't even know was there. And so it's so amazing. So 1 Corinthians 2 actually is all about tongues, although it never mentions tongues. But when you start to read it in the context of the Holy Spirit working with us as Christians, you will start to see this chapter unlock for you. Now, I don't have, the, uh, I don't have time to go through the whole thing. But I'll just, I'm just going to read verse 13. Actually, I'll just read from um, verse 9. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Just need a bit more light there. No mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. This, verse 13, this is the key verse. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Holy Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. Now, when you put that into the context of tongues, what it's saying, I believe, is that as you speak in tongues, 
It is very often God himself speaking. And he may be saying things like this. I'm the great father. I'm the great father. I love you, John. I'm so glad you're praying with me like this. And I think this is the power of tongues that we don't realize. And I've got it there in Isaiah verse 28, uh, chapter 28, that with tongues, with stammering lips, with whatever you're going to call it, God will speak to this people. And what is happening is that God is speaking spiritual to spiritual. When you look at the Greek, it actually is just the two adjectives, spiritual to spiritual. And then the translators have added various nouns, spiritual words, spiritual things, spiritual pictures, but it's really spiritual to spiritual. And what's happening in the tongues is that with the Holy Spirit, you are speaking into your spirit things that have not yet happened. In another way, it says in, in 1 Corinthians 14, we are uttering mysteries. And so it's interesting that in 1 Corinthians 2, if you have a look back here to, um, to uh, verse 7, it talks about speaking mysteries. Now, look, there's so much to uncover. I, you, you go and study it a little bit more. And I also have a chapter on it uh, in, my, in my book here. Um, I've set this up as like a devotional, one a day for 30 days. That you can just sit in it and, and go over it. And um, there's also pictures, because the Lord got me to start to draw my prayer times. And it just is, oh, the anointing flowing. All right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's my thing. And here's my wife. I knew she'd come up. I had to pick the right moment. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, when John was talking about the tangle in his life, so for me, I had a tangle in my life that occurred when I was 17 years old, and uh, in actual fact, it was 38 years ago this year, and, uh, and yeah, literally, so I'm 55, so I was 17, and, um, but you know, what the thing is, is that the, uh, the tangle, like I have kind of lived, I've, I mean, I've had counseling for it and I've, I've talked to people for it, but I've kind of kept living in that victim mentality for a long time. And But what happened was that I was too proud to just let God do what he needed to do. It wasn't that I was too proud to go and get help because I did, but I was too proud to come and sit with God and let him do what he wanted to do because I was too scared that I was going to cry and lose it and not be able to get the control back. And and you know, mascara going everywhere and everything happening. And I'm like, oh, and what, what had this situation had set me up for was I had to be always be in control. And so if I started to, to cry and to let go of that control, what was that gonna look like? And so I would, I would like be somebody that would stay by this, the water that would be stirred. I would, you know, I'd feel the Holy Spirit stirring you know, and, and like something like a conference and stirring me to, to start to move in him. But I'd just sit there and be like, no, I can't because if I get wet or if I cry, everything's going to look messy and I, and I can't do that. I'm too in control. And until the point where Jesus was like, would you get over yourself? Get over yourself and get over your pride. And to the point where in front of my pastor and John and, another, and one of our elders, I cried and I cried and I cried. Just a couple of weeks ago, that same thing. But what, it ha what happened was that, that the situation 38 years ago, what it did was it shut down my voice. And you see, the biggest thing what the enemy is going to do, especially for women, and this is what's being released for women today in this, in this nation, is a woman's voice. And we are in a season where a woman's voice is starting to rise up against this, in this nation because of what the enemy is doing to our kids. And it's because our kids are getting attacked that the mums are going to go, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on a minute. This is not. This is not okay. And so, so women are starting to rise. There is a there's a, a rising up of Deborahs and Esthers across the world, actually, and and it's for such a time as this that our voices are starting to be heard. Not because we're coming against, not because it's a feminist thing or it's a, you know, we've got our rights. It's because our men are releasing us into a place of being a voice in this nation. And um, 
uh, and I was just, I was thinking about um, Alicia, she shared a dream bef- uh, not long ago, not just in the prayer thing, about a, a river and having to climb over a fence. And you know, so often that river is the Holy Spirit. And he's just saying, would you just come and, and soak? Would you come and walk in here? But you've got to get over a fence. You've got to get over yourself. There's a, you've got some fences are just like a, a barbed wire thing or something small. you kind of just got to step over. Some are great big walls, and you're like, I don't know how to get the, over this one. You've got to unpack it bit by bit by bit by bit until it comes down, and you can get into that river. But once you're in there, once you're walking in the flow of the Holy Spirit, the treasure... The treasure that he's going to unlock and pour into your life is incredible. And once, I, once we started to speak in tongues, once we started to walk in the power of what that was and, the, and what that released in us, the treasure that's being poured into our lives is incredible and incredible in what he's able to do. And, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that, that, you know, sometimes the tangle is pride. Sometimes the tangle is fear. You know, it all it, it set me on a track of anxiety, um, and so I, I had to battle with that. And but but all of us, all of a sudden, God's released me. He really, he really, honestly has released me. Uh, and to be and actually, I um, can you, oh, I I have always wanted to. Um, I, I'm I'm quite creative. I'm a singer. I'm quite creative, and I I like. Um, I always wanted to paint, but I'm a useless drawer. I cannot draw to save myself. Um, and so I could not paint, you know, uh, you know, some people are incredible and they can paint um, landscapes and, you know, paint people's faces and everything. But God's like, but the one thing that I am really, really good at is colour. Like all my life, like when I was young, I worked in the fashion industry and I would have my bosses come up and say, you're so good at putting colour together. I want you to do this and I want you to do that. And so I've always been really good at being able to put colour together. And uh, and so all of a sudden one day I was looking at something on Instagram and I was like, oh, surely I can paint that. Surely. It's just like a easy. Anyway, um... And so I started to put colours together, and, I, and so now I have all this range of all this pretty cool stuff. But, um, and, but what I do is that I ask the Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want me to paint? And, um, he's, and it's like, so he gives me this idea, and sometimes I'll read something, and so there was a, John had been talking a lot about um, the power and the presence of God, or the tabernacle, tabernacle of David. Power and presence of God. And I was like, well, how could I put that in an abstract thing? So basically, I came up with this. And, um, and so, like, so it's like the, the, power, the, the presence of God was the yellow. The black is kind of like the ark, the sides of the ark. And the purple is just like the, I don't know, the glory of God or something. But it was, um, anyway, anybody want this? Yeah, so the power and presence of God. So every time you walk past it. So, so when, you, when you start to tap into the Holy Spirit, when you start to speak in tongues and he starts to release, he's honestly, you have no idea what he's going to do for you. It's just, it's an, the most incredible journey. But it's, it's knowing what it is to sit at his feet, to rest in that place. And it's in that place that he's going to bring healing and restoration, ideas, creativity. He's going to start to release you into what he's got for you. Because I tell you what, every single person sitting in this room has got an assignment. An assignment for you, for your family, for this nation, even for the world. Some of you will be sent out. Some of you are sent to this nation. Some of you, it's for your family. One of the seven mountains, every single one of us has got an assignment, but it's learning to sit in the rest, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit, learning to get in that river with him, pick up his treasure and go, here I am, where do you want me to go? I need to go with you. No matter where you're at, you won't lose that assignment. That assignment or those assignments are yours forever. Don't need to rush it. Sit with him and let him unravel what he's got for you. Just, just look, I just want to encourage you, uh, husbands and wives, um, in November 2021, um, so what, what happened after August 2019 is that COVID came, right? And then we started praying in tongues on Zoom. So, not, not, not Deb and me at that, that time, and just get up in the morning, pray. 
We did it Monday to Friday because we we're all stuck at, in lockdowns anyway. And then out of that, I thought, man, why don't I combine this with music? You know, and so I started, I, as a keyboard, I just started playing. And then I said, ah, oh, Zoom's all right, but I like face-to-face. -face. So the only face-to-face -face I had at that time was my wife. So just in our bedroom in our lounge there, I set up my keyboard and I set up a bit of communion and Deb was on the other side and we just started our own little tabernacle of David, our own little tent, and we started to worship. We started to pray in tongues, started to sing. We didn't even have a song list. We just started to have a good little chord progression and just sang in the spirit. And before long, we were both crying. Things were happening. Deal with that. Repent of that. You know, and this has become a key part of our life now. And husbands and wives, tongues helps you to pray. But even, you know, just put some music on and pray together. There is something powerful when a husband and wife start to pray together. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. Almost. Look, we, we're running out of time, but I just want to um, just finish with this one thing. Just maybe the next slide. Ne no, yeah. See, I, I know that the enemy hates this. And going back to that guy that was sitting on that mat, he was sitting there, but he was waiting for someone else. He was waiting for the stirring of the pool. And he, oh, there's no one to help me, there's no one to help me. And Jesus, it's like Jesus came along. You actually don't need someone else here. It's you. And I, I don't know if you heard earlier at the start of the service, you know, you've just come off a real high conference. And, you know, you, sometimes we need the stirring, we need powerful ministry to come in. But at the end of the day, if we're going to walk the life, you, you have got to pick up your mat and walk. You've got to learn to have your time with God. You personally, you can't rely on Pastor James all the time. He's got his own walk with God. Plus he's leading. But it's up for you and I that we have times with God and we bring that fire to this place. And then we all celebrate together. But if you come just to get it here, that's not fair on the leaders. Get it, get your own mat and not be relying on the stirring all the time. But you see, that word, what I'm sharing, without the Holy Spirit helping you in tongues and that whole prayer language, it becomes a little bit of work. But I, this is where I've discovered it's a place of rest. And so, look, I just wanted to spend two minutes just, just explaining a little bit about how to get there. And it's in my book, but the enemy knows that it's a tactical advantage because he can't understand that secret language. It short circuits, interferes, destroys his tactics. How many times do you know that your prayer is blowing mountains away from your life? Just clearing the way. And it's a foundational gift which unlocks all the other gifts. It's an, a whole nother talk. But uh, next slide. Common questions and objections that come up. What about if I'm just making this up? You know, and I've heard people say, well, just say all those uh, Japanese motorbike names. Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki. <laughs> I've actually heard that. Yeah, sometimes it works too. Uh, what if I lose control of myself? I guarantee you that it is not a trance. You are totally in control. I... I drive while I'm speaking in tongues. I, I vacuum, don't I, babe? No, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you can speak in tongues. You can, you try it. You can do a calculation on your calculator because it's your spirit praying, not your mind. And you are in control. You switch it on and off, but it is the ho it's as miraculous as a healing. It is a gift. It is a miracle. How do I know it's not counterfeit? Well, you will know, you will know. You know that you know, because the Spirit witnesses inside of you. Um, and also what your lifestyle is. You know, it, when I started praying seriously in tongues, within one week, the Lord challenged an area of my life which I had to clean up. One week. He 
took the thing at the top of the list. Doesn't the Bible say it's not for everyone? Very interesting verse in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, which says, Do all speak in tongues? Question mark. And the confusion, and it looks like the answer is no, of course not. But actually, it's a confusion between the four types of tongues. You have a personal prayer language. You have a message that comes out in church where everybody hears it, and it's like a prophetic word, and that's the one where you need an interpretation, and that's the one Paul is talking about. Does everybody do that? No. Is everybody a prophet in the house? No. Does everybody have the gift of healing? No. Does everybody give out a word of tongues at a meeting? No. But then people have taken it to be the whole thing. But then why else would Paul say, I'm glad that I speak in tongues more than you all. If it wasn't for everyone, that would be the most arrogant, horrible thing to say. But Paul knows that it's for everyone because what was the first thing that Jesus gave to the church? The gift of tongues with the spirit, fire, because he knows we all need it and he knows that it's such a place of rest. Is it, It's just too divisive, so let's not go there. It's a good argument and I know it triggers and I know it split churches. But the enemy is tricky because he knows how powerful it is. I've got to feel the anointing. No, you don't. Sometimes you just got to do it. Yeah, you don't feel the anointing. Sometimes we as Pentecostal churches, we sort of use it as a warm-up. We get the engine going, which is good sometimes. But you don't have to feel the anointing. Only two or three, one at a time, must have an interpretation. Again, that's the four different types. The third one is groanings. And the fourth one is when you actually speak in a known language like Russian or Japanese that you've never learned. But most of the time, the personal prayer is an angelic language. So I just felt to just give the next slide. How do you get this? It's a prayer you pr pray. Don't have time to go into the now, but Jesus is the one that does it. So you can be in your own bedroom. You don't have to have someone praying for you because it's Jesus that prays for you. And a prayer is, Jesus, I thank you that you desire to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and to give me the ability to pray in tongues. I gladly receive this gift and ability into my life. I know this is your will for me. I ask you right now, I receive. Thank you. Now, my own personal testimony is that I had such a mental block on it I actually couldn't speak in tongues until I dream. I was dreaming. My wife prayed for me, and nothing happened again. And I thought, here we go again, rejection, something's wrong with me. And then as I was sleeping, six days later, I was dreaming. I was worshiping around the throne, and I was just rattling away in tongues. And then I just woke up, and I thought, whoa, whoa, what, what's happening? And then my mind sort of tried to analyze it. I'm a very analytical man. And I just, oh, what was that word? Oh, I've seen, I seem to be saying the same words over and over. And I know that as, as I've led people and helped them get into this, it often just starts with one syllable, bub, 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 because you're a baby. It, we're babies. And when you're learning a language, what do babies do? Bub, bub, bum, mum, mum. And, you, you know, so as you, as you get into this, uh, it's important, I know this is your will for me, which is why I'm just spending just a little time on this, that you guys, you got to believe that this is what God wants. But if you come thinking, oh, maybe this isn't for me, because you got that 1 Corinthians 12, it, do all speak in tongues? And maybe you've been part of a church that has taught, no. Why would Isaiah say, this is the place of rest? Because you sit at the feet of Jesus, prattling away, and He parts the Red Sea for you. It's the Lord's battle. God fights your battles. And so look, my wife's paintings, my little book, these things have come out of the blue. And there are just, you're talking about heaven to earth, there are treasures, assignments up there for you to come down into earth. And sometimes you've got to pray them into being, spirit to spirit. So I just encourage you this morning that as you step from a very exciting conference and as you look at the year ahead 
and as you stand strong with your pastors and your leaders, that you need to come from a place of rest and that God has provided you this place of rest, the engine room of your Christian walk, (laughs) that Jesus is here and he gives us the Holy Spirit. Do you know that if you're a Christian right now, the Holy Spirit is in you? We are carrying the Holy Spirit. And so really tongues is just releasing what is already there. Amen. Why don't we all just stand? Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to do an altar call for this one because it's, it is a bit of a triggering run, this run. But just while eyes are closed and as I've spoken this morning, you know that this is something that you would really like to enter into. And for the first time, maybe you are understanding that it is for you. Just while every eye is closed, why don't you just put up your hand? Thank you. If, If you want to receive the baptism of the Spirit and to be able to speak in tongues, you put up your hand now. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so as we're praying, I'm going to pray with you. And we're going to believe. Then as the team is worshiping, you know, it could be six days later in a dream. It could be as we go into a, a, a worship praise song now. Uh, it could be as you're driving along to work. Suddenly you'll feel something start to rise up in your spirit and you'll start to pray and you'll start to speak in tongues and you'll just acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is with you and helping you because that's what He wants. He is here to help. So pray with me. Why don't we all pray, church? So, um, Lord Jesus, we come to you. You are the baptizer. You baptized in the Holy Spirit. You baptize in fire. So we come to you now, Lord Jesus. We believe that this is for me. I believe this is for me. Will you baptize me now with your Spirit? Will you cause the Holy Spirit to bubble up inside me? And Lord Jesus, I want to be able to speak in tongues. Release this gift in me right now. I receive it. I know that it is your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this gift. I receive it now by faith. In in your name I pray. Amen. So as we sing, just start to practice. You might hear bop, 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 bop. Uh, It might be in a dream. Uh, But I just want to encourage you because it's a place of rest. Your Christian life will never, never, ever be the same again. And it's like, why didn't I learn this life hack earlier? It's (laughs) Thank you, Lord. That's it. singing you know some of you thinking oh it's going to just come on me like magic 
It doesn't work like that. You've actually got to speak. You've actually got to speak in faith. And, you know, you don't put it on. You'll, you'll know that the Holy Spirit will start to give you a, some syllables. Jesus, I release, I release the Holy Spirit. I release your work, Lord. I just come against any lies, any religious strongholds that will try and shut us down. Lord, I know that you have given us your spirit. You want us to have life and have it abundantly. I pray for everyone that is reaching out to you right now. I just pray there be a release of the spirit that we can walk in strength that we can walk this Christian life with your help. In Jesus' name.